I'm so happy to see every one of you here. If you're here for the first time, this meeting, the conversation that we're going to have today can change your life, can change your family's life, can change your children's life, can change your future, and can change your eternal destination. Like, this is big. You know, we're going we're gonna to do a lot of fun stuff today. I know they're giving away a car and all kinds of gifts. And, but I want to make sure, it's not going to be long, but just a few moments. I want everyone, the best that they can, is to focus. This is what the Bible says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying. What this is means is, is that you can have ears and not pay attention. Come on, some of you ladies know about that with your husbands. Did you hear what I said? What would you say? I heard you, but I'm not, I'm not sure I understood you. So when we focus on listening, it's so important because that's how you gain wisdom, insight. People pay a lot of money to come into a room that could give them a key to their success. Successful people will pay millions of dollars to have a mentor come in and take their business from one level to another level. And they, what they do is they record the session, they, pay, they take notes, then they have a whole team come together and they review what was covered so they can now apply it. We know this, that even if you know what to do and you don't do it, it doesn't benefit you. Because in life, there's a lot of know-it-alls. Like, I already know. Well, the, the only information that you really know is the information that you apply. So we're here to learn and apply. Someone say, learn and what? This moment can change your life forever. It could put you on a different track on a different destiny. All, everything that's gonna happen great in your life is first gonna come through words. I'll even say this, everything bad that's gonna happen in your life first comes through words. So you gotta be careful who's speaking into your life. How many understand that? You gotta be careful who's speaking into your kid's life. We got to be intentional about this. I got five girls. I've been married for 32 years. I'm intentional about being a father. You say, Pastor, you just let them make their decisions? No, I train them. I tell them what decisions to make. Well, you know, I just want my kids to make their decision on their own. No. You're going to mess up your life. You're too, you have no experience. Let me help you. You're going to do this and that and that. And if you don't do it, you're going to get a whipping. Are we on the same page right here? So today what I want to do is give you an invitation to follow a new leader. And the reason I said follow a new leader, because if you want a team, to start winning, you don't have to change all the players on the team, just change the coach. How many understand there's some winning coaches? If we want to change Pomona, this is what we do. We get, we get more leaders coming in here that want to change the people. If we want to change our families, we don't start with the kids, we start with the parents. Do we understand? So I want my kids to produce and be successful. It could start right now. I'm gonna choose how my next, I'm gonna choose what training I'm gonna give my kids so we can start producing a different result. My life was changed through a conversation my father, he grew up in a home where they had 
have no spiritual guidance. God was not in the picture. So what my father lived for was pleasure. And if you just live for pleasure, you are dangerous to yourself and you're dangerous to your family because you'll sell out to the greatest pleasure. There's no discipline there. Pleasure is the God. There's a religion that serves pleasure. And you know what they call it? Hedonism. I serve pleasure. And whatever gives me the most pleasure, I choose. Even if it hurts me, it hurts my family, it hurts my kids. Understand this. Pleasure is the goal. So my dad lived a life of pleasure. Every weekend, he'd go out on my mom and find the cutest girl he could be with, even though he was married. He would go out on my mom. You know what that's called? Adultery. It's one of the commandments of God. Committing adultery might be pleasurable for a moment, but it's going to destroy your marriage. It's going to destroy your trust. It's going to destroy your legacy. It's going to destroy your children. So when God says, thou shalt not commit adultery, he's not trying to mess up your life. He's trying to help you be successful. A successful father, a successful mother, a successful parent, a successful citizen, a successful person. So we follow God's advice, we'll start experiencing success, victory. You'll start overcoming. Not only are you going to overcome, your kids will start gravitating towards your success. Do we understand a little bit what's being said today? I got a hole in my pocket right here. I feel like my key's going down my leg. That's all right. If something comes out of my leg, it's not a baby. It's just a key. All right. That's, you know, coming up here and Hallmark's watching me. But I goof off like this in Hallmark too. But we're here to, someone said, we're here to learn. So my dad went out partying every single weekend. You know what the deception of doing something wrong is? You're getting away with it. The deception is because some of us are really good liars. We're not just adulterers. We're lying adulterers. We're so good at lying, we believe our lies. Have you ever lied so well like you actually believe it? I wasn't there. Yeah, you were. We got your picture. We got you on video. No. See, the police officers know this. We got you on video. It ain't me. I promise. I got a twin. You probably heard it all. But some of us are like that. We're doing wrong, and this is, this is the problem. Because we're getting away with it, we still think we're okay. But I've learned this, that sooner or later, there's going to be a day that you pay the price for the wrong you've done. What you do in darkness will eventually come out into the light and cause its destruction. And it doesn't just destroy you, it destroys your kids. There has to be some parents, there has to be some people that have made up their mind that the dysfunction stops here today because if there's another option, I want to take it. That's smart. Every weekend, my dad's going out on my mom, getting drunk, getting high. And you know the story after the run. We come back on Monday if the run's over, and we say, I'm sorry. I promise I'll never do it again, even with tears. But there's a problem. You can make all kinds of promises. But without the power of God, you'll break every single one of them. We're not here to give you religion. We're here to give you power to live a new life. 
You could have a new leader. The pastor, the way we're is coming as the savior of Pomona. No, we're going to partnership with all the organizations here that want to bring some positive change. To, come on, to Pomona. But we're bringing the power to do miracles, the power to change the gang member and make him into a pastor of the Pomona. Come on, most Pomona on campus. Some of you guys don't know, but Pastor Chris wasn't Pastor Chris some years ago. Pastor Chris was Gangster Chris. He was a leader of a bike gang that were killing, drug dealing, violence. And it came to a service like this. There were people out to kill him for the things he did. His family was falling apart. His wife was leaving him. She said, I'm done following you because you're leading us to pain, suffering, and destruction, and I can't follow you anymore. With the kids, you're going to kill us all. She came to church first. She goes, I need a new leader. I'm tired of the drugs leading us, the anger leading us, the past leading us. My, my fear leading me, my depression leading me, my suicidal thoughts leading me. I'm done. I need a new leader. And she chose to follow Jesus. The greatest leader in the history of the world. There's no one, there's no one more famous than Jesus. There's no one that's done what he's done. He died, check this out, and resurrected from the dead. That's bad. That's powerful. He walked on water. He healed the sick. He cast out demons and caused change everywhere he went. He wasn't there to judge people. He was there to help them. He was there to restore them. He was there to give them peace. He was there to give them joy. He was there to transform their lives. That's what Jesus was famous for, and he's still famous for that. This is the moment, and my dad, every weekend, drinking, adultery, lying, and abusing. The next thing he would do is come home every single weekend. Do you know that you usually, you and I are the same? that we usually accuse others of the very things we're doing. And usually the people you hate most, you're most like. That's why you hate it in them. Like you're a lying scoundrel. Because you're a lying scoundrel. So my dad's going out there womanizing, drinking, conniving, lying, hustling. He comes home and he starts accusing my mother for doing what he was doing. All you women are like, he would think. He'd try to beat the truth out of my mom. Put guns to her head, punch her in the face like she was a man. Monday morning, it was a different story. I'm sorry. He's bowing down before my mama, crying, I promise I'll never do it again. I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for being a bad example. I'm sorry for being a bad father. And all we're saying today, there's one thing about feeling bad after you've done something. But that's not enough for change. There has to be a day that you realize, I can't change me. And I need some outside help. And that's where God comes in. That's where we come in. That's where family comes in. That's where mentoring comes in. That's where training comes in. Come on. Some, some of us need to be trained out of the mess. You need to be coached out of it. But you need to make a decision. And this is a decision. Who is going to lead you? What? It's going to lead you. Do you know there's some people in here that crack is leading you? Heroin.
heroin is leading you. Meth is leading you. Anger is leading you. Lust is leading you. And what has it led you to? Your mind's messed up. It's taking you to prison. I'm not dogging nobody. I'm just telling you, you got a wrong leader. And if there's an option to get out of that cycle of destruction, I know your daddy passed it on to you, and I know your mama passed it on to you, but you don't need to pass it on to the next generation. There's an option. You can pick a new leader. The option of new leadership was offered to my father. His name was Tito. Tito, you don't have to live this way. He would say, I got this. I got this. I'm not addicted. I can stop anytime I want. Well, why don't you stop right now? I don't want to. <laughs> You're lying to yourself. I'm not an alcoholic. I just get drunk all the time because I want to. But I can stop any time. Well, let's stop right now. Not today. We're celebrating the grand opening of the Pomona campus. We gotta celebrate. <laughs> hey, you know why we laugh? Because we're too much alike. Like I'm, see, there's, there's a problem. Be careful what's leading you, because what's leading you can lead you to hell. I said, well, you know, the life I'm living is kind of hell. Yeah, it's kind of hell. It's getting warmer, but you ain't there yet. Don't think it can't get worse. It can get worse. You could die and end up in a place that you can't get out of ever. So now Jesus came with an offer. My dad was offered, Tito, why don't you follow Jesus? Not religion. Understand here, we are not offering a religion. We're not saying join our religion because religion can't save your life. Religion, all it does is give you rules and make you, and make you a gangster. What church you go to? The way we roll out with you, give out the what's up. What are they? What religion you belong? Well, I'm a Catholic, hey, what are you? Well, I'm a Mormon. Well, let's throw down then, they say. <laughs> there's, no go there's not going to be any name dropping in heaven. There's not going to be no sections in heaven. There's not going to be no hoods in heaven. There's only going to be a father with a whole bunch of children. This is what I'm asking you. Are you a child of God? Is Jesus your leader? Have you made that decision yet? Because if you haven't made that decision, you're not going to get there. You cannot get to heaven through a religion. You could only get to heaven by placing your faith in a new leader, a savior. Eternal life is not something you earn. Eternal life is a gift you receive. Someone say gift. We got some gifts for you today. Free stuff. And we're not going to ask you to do nothing for it. You showed up. That's it. So you, know, you don't have to like put in three, three hours of volunteer work. Then you get your hot dog. You're going to earn your way around here. That's the first lesson. That's not what it's about. We're here to sell you this. We love you. You don't know me yet, but we love you. You don't know me yet, but God loves you. You might not know him. And I, you might even be turned out by other Christians and say, man, I don't like those Christians. They're always judging me. Well, I'm going to apologize for them because Jesus did not come to judge you. He came to pick you up. He came to save you. He came to set you free. So there was an offer. My dad refused it. No, nah, man, not now. Be careful with that mindset of not now. You know what I mean? 
by that is when you know how to do something right, don't let not now answer for you. You know what that's called? Procrastination. And the more you say not now, it might never happen. I have people that I'm talking to in the neighborhood. Not now, pastor. I'm almost there. I'll check in in the men's home. I'm not quite ready. And within a week, their number came up. They died on the streets. I see them on the front page of the newspaper. Usually in our city, if there's someone getting murdered in our city, nine out of ten of them were in our church. I said, Pastor, what are you talking about? God gave them a chance. They didn't know their number was coming up. They thought, I got this. My dad said, I got this. One more weekend, one more weekend, one more weekend until your number's up. My dad's number came up. At the age of 32 years old, one more, one more weekend. Do you know there's probably someone in here that you're thinking one more weekend and you don't have it? That God brought us here to Pomona right now because you don't have another weekend. You don't have another shot. After this week, you're going to end up in prison. After this week, you might end up dead. After this week, you might end up crippled. Your life might change for the worse. This might be a turning point for you. Pastor, you trying to scare me? No, I'm just trying to tell you reality. These officers see it every single day. It's just reality. People are dying every day. What makes you think your number ain't coming up? All I'm saying, we know our number's coming up. We might as, be, well, be, might as well be ready for our future. It's time to turn our lives around and pick a new leader for us and our children. Come on, is there anybody here that wants to save Pomona and save their hood and save their family? It starts with us. <laughs> Say, Pastor, whoa, 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 whoa. Down and calm down, calm out a little bit. No, I'm not calming down. You're too important for me. And what God did for me is real. He changed my life. I'm the first, I'm the first Garcia that ever gave their life to Jesus and chose a new leader. And if I'm going to choose a new leader, my kids are going to choose a new leader. And everywhere I go, I'm going to share this option that most people don't know. Come on, someone's going to leave their heroin here. Someone's going to leave their pain here. Someone's going to leave their drugs here. Someone's going to leave their past here. It could happen. My dad went out one more weekend. You know what the problem is? You get a false sense of confidence. You know how many times my dad pulled out the gun? You know how many times my dad went out there, drunk driving, crashes his car, and we lived on an island called St. Croix. And in that island, my dad was connected with everybody, and they'd give him favors. The police would bring my dad home after he crashed the car. My dad seemed like he was always getting away with everything, everything until that one day. He called someone out on a gunfight. That night... My dad got a bullet between his eyes, and he went into eternity. It's over. And he went with his leader. His leader wasn't Jesus. His leader was the devil. His leader was sin. His leader was destruction. His leader was adultery. His leader was abuse. Don't die with that leader over your life. Because that leader will take you to eternal separation from God and everything good in your life. So now, Jesus was on earth. And said, so what did he say? His first mission, this is all he says. This is what he says. I'm going to read it for you. He says in Matthew 4, 19, it says, he said to them, follow me. As my disciples, accepting me as your master and teacher and walking the same path of life 
that I walk, and I'll make you fishers of men. Jesus started out his mission with just a simple sentence, follow me. You've been following everybody on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, in your hood. And God says, how's that going for you? Because I know this, you're still empty. I know this, you're really disappointed. Because as long as you're following that, this I do know, you're not complete yet. You were made to follow Jesus, not a religion, made to follow Jesus. The same offer. I want you to think about this. Just imagine Jesus here right now. And he comes up to you personally. And he says, son, daughter, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been seeing the pain, the addiction, the suffering that you've been going through the anger. Every day you're becoming more angry and more edgy. You're taking it out on people that you love. You said, who am I becoming? And Jesus has been waiting for this moment and he comes to you and he calls you by name. And he says, are you done following what you've been following? Will you follow me? If you follow me, I'll give you eternal life. If you follow me, I'll give you freedom. If you follow me, I'll give you peace. If you follow me, I'll give you purpose. You could do this. Follow me. And these are the only three options. Now, if you follow him, I'm going to tell you this. You get eternal life. Someone say eternal life. The scripture says here, I'm going to read just two more scriptures. It says right here. John 10, 27, it says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. Who does he give eternal life to? Those that make a decision to follow him. Who gets eternal life? Those that have placed their faith in Jesus. Not religious people, those that place their faith in Jesus. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. They follow me, and I give them what? Eternal life doesn't just mean you live forever. Eternal life is a quality of life. It, it's called, it's called, this is what it's called. It's called the Zoe life or the full abundant life. How many want to have some contentment in your life? How many would like to have a good night's sleep again? With those demons aren't messing with you every night. If we're honest, some of us are dealing with some serious demonic activity up here. You can't sleep, you can't rest. You're full of anxiety, full of fear. It's a miracle you showed up today. But a miracle began when you showed up. But it's going to finish today as we make a decision. Come on, follow me. I'll give you eternal life. But there's three responses. Your life can change today. You can not only live forever, you can start living a new quality of life. I made up my mind that I was not going to follow my dad's lead. Say, Pastor, do you respect your dad? I'm not saying I didn't honor my dad, I didn't respect my dad, but I was not going to follow him. Something had to change. And I, all I'm saying is this, be careful that you don't make your parents an excuse for your behavior. And I'm not tripping saying that you didn't have bad parents. All I'm saying is they were bad, they weren't there, they abandoned you. Some of you guys don't even know who your father is. They, you were abused, you were hurt. I'm not, dis, I'm not denying that. But it's time for you to stop giving that power over your future. And you got to say, I got, it wasn't right. But I'm not going to use that excuse to live wrong and pass it on to the next generation. Something's going to change today. And I had to make up my mind. I had to make up my mind. I'm not going to be out there getting married and sleeping around with other women. If I'm going to get married, I'm going to be true to my wife. It takes a real man to do that. And I'm saying, if you haven't been able to do that, let's give you the backbone today, the power of God. And ladies, if your husband comes up and he gives his life to Jesus, don't be bringing up the past anymore. That's gone. Let's start over today. We're moving forward. 
It's time for you to forgive your wife, forgive your husband, receive forgiveness. Let's start over today. A miracle is going to happen today. People are going to get healed today. People are going to get set free today. Demons are going to leave you today. Something's going to happen today. It's going to happen right now as you receive. Come on, someone, accept the call, accept the call, accept the call, accept the call, accept the call. It's up to you. You can reject it or you can receive it. So now, there's one thing you could do is procrastinate. You could say, you know, pastor, what you said is correct. Like, I know it's correct. Not, like, I was trying to find something that you were saying was off. I can't find it yet. I'm looking, though. The reason I'm looking because I'm trying to find a way out. So I'm asking you a question. Jesus is saying, follow me. Is it going to be a yes or a no? Or is it going to be yes, but not now? Si, pero no hoy. Mañana. I talked to a guy on the streets three, mo three months ago. You know what I did? I took my office and I put it in the middle of baseline, which is where all the crazy stuff's happening. All the prostitution, all the gang banging, drug dealing. I put my desk and I'm studying out there on the streets. Right? So this guy passes by on speed, riding his bike 100 miles per hour, going nowhere. Like he's going nowhere. <laughs> Sweating. Like, oh. Like, he should have been trying out for the Olympics how fast he was going. Where are you going? Over there, over there, over there. Calm down. So I, I had, he stopped at my desk because I recognized him. I've been seeing him running. And the leader of drugs leading his life for 10 years. Running. When he first started running, he had a wife. He had kids. Now he's running without a wife, without a kids. And he's right there on the streets alone on a stolen bike. Because you know he didn't buy it. And I told him. Aren't you tired of running? How much do you need to lose from here to there for you to finally give up and surrender to Jesus as, as your leader? He's the only one that can save you, set you free, and give you a new life. Time is now. I'm on the streets all by myself. Um, I'm not one of those pastors that needs a whole entourage around me. I'm gangster with Jesus. What, 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 you going to shoot me? I dare you, I go to heaven. I already died when I gave my life to Jesus. I died to my old way. I'm just here to help some people out and get them to heaven with me and choose the leader I chose. Okay. So you know what he tells me? He goes, uh, Pastor, you're right. I got to change. But not right now. This is what he told me. I got to go take care of some business. You don't got no business. When you start saying, I want change, this is what's going to happen. All kinds of excuses are going to come up in your mind. And you're going to start saying, I got to do this. I got to do this first. You don't got to do nothing. You come with your stolen bike. You come with your nappy hair. You come with your addiction. You give your life to Jesus. And he starts turning your life around, sets you free, and gives you purpose. Don't, don't worry about it. Things are falling off of me right now. Someone say procrastination. There was a guy in the Bible that Jesus asked to follow him. Another man of Jesus' followers said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Like, I, I would have thought that was a good excuse. Like, you know, Jesus, I want to follow you, but I want to go bury my father. But you know what Jesus said? He said, let the spiritually dead bury the dead. What he was saying is, don't even let your father get in the way of having a relationship with your father. Because you know what he was saying? Let me wait until my father dies, then I'll follow you. And all I'm saying, whatever your excuse is, 
Get rid of it because it's not going to be you. All you got to do is say yes. He's coming with the power. He's coming with the resources. He's coming with the new life. You choose. Someone said procrastination. And the other option is accept the call and immediately follow. Someone said immediately. Do you know why some people can't succeed? There's too much time gap between instruction and application. And if you get a habit of instruction, gap, 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 we, ooh, sweet, ooh, 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 that. What? Oh, my God. You're fooling yourself. And you know what's happening? You're developing a habit of hearing and not doing. And if you start developing a habit of hearing and not doing, this is what could happen. You could get to the point that you could never do it. Because now it turned into a habit. Don't ever think you're always going to have another opportunity. This could be your last one. Someone said, accept the call and immediately take action. In Matthew 4, 20, last verse. Jesus calls them to follow him as his disciples. As his what? Now, I, want, I just want to clear this up. Jesus does not want you to follow him as a member of a church. He doesn't want you to follow him as a fan. He doesn't want you to follow him as, as just a believer. He wants you to follow him as a disciple. Some will say disciple. You know what a disciple is? It's someone that's made up their mind to follow Jesus. And this is how I'm following him. I want to I learn. I want to have his character. I want to have his habits. I want to have his thoughts. I want to become like him. How many understand that? So the scripture says, immediately they left their nets and followed him, becoming his disciples. We're done. Believe in him as their savior. So today, it's time to make a decision. Jesus asked those guys to follow him. And they immediately dropped everything and followed him. Will you respond like those disciples, those men of God? They didn't come as men of God. They came as thieves. They came as liars. They came as adulterers. Jesus always offered the outcasts the rejected, the hurting, and the broken, the hopeless, come follow me. While everybody else was shying away from them, Jesus is walking right to them. Follow me. That's why I, lo I love churches like this. I love churches like this. You say, Pastor, you know, that guy's high. Bring him in. This is a place. Come on, this is a place. That make, they're hurting. They're broken. Bring them right here. How many understand that? This is a hospital. We all come the same way, jacked up. How many want some change? Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Are we Amen. giving away car and all stuff? Praise the Lord. That's, that's why you got to stay. See, you can't even leave. <laughs> we got you hostage. Come on, isn't this awesome? Palmar Campus, God bless you. We love you. Pomona campus, God bless you. We love you. Yes. Tijuana campus, God bless you. We love you. Kenya campus, God bless you. We love you. Oregon campus, God bless you. We love you.